it seems like every day, every week, every month, whatever you want to say, very regularly, that I'm seeing story after story about a new city, a new location, banning, shutting down, restricting, ending, killing, whatever you want to say, the short-term rental business, right? Airbnb hosts, VRBO folks, it seems like constantly, right, we're being assaulted by the government's new restrictions, right? The one I got up here, we're going to talk about it later, Honolulu, man, they're banning Airbnb. Hawaii, for crying out loud, it's Hawaii, right? If I think about vacation, vacation destinations, right? Hawaii, baby, even Hawaii is getting banned, right? So that's the question, right? What do you do? What do you do when the city you're trying to invest in is trying to shut down your Airbnb business? What do you do when the city you're trying to buy vacation rentals in is like, nope, no more short-term rentals, folks? What do investors like you, investors like me, what do we do to deal with the new and increasing and ever-changing government uh, regulations and restrictions on the short-term rental business? That's what I want to dive into today. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I am here to help investors like you become better investors, smarter investors, more educated investors, and hopefully more profitable investors, right? A little bit about me. I've sold over $200 million worth of real estate, and I happen to manage a $75 million rental property portfolio, right? So, you say, but first, Rowdy, I've been around the block. And some of the stuff in our rental portfolio, that $75 million portfolio, is short-term rental property investments, okay? Now, that is uh, not a large portion of our portfolio. To be honest, I made a large majority of my money, my funds. I get my bread buttered with the lower-income rental stuff, Section 8 stuff. But we do have a short-term rental property division. And the reason... The short-term rental property division in my company is smaller than the other stuff. Your traditional buy-and-hold stuff is because, uh, you know, for the longest time, I'll be honest with you guys, I was a little apprehensive to enter the space of the short-term rental business because there's a lot going on, right? And that's what we're talking about today, right? Government restrictions, they're happening constantly, right? Like, got an article brought up here, okay? I just saw this one, right? Honolulu will require... A 90-day minimum stay for Airbnbs and short-term rentals outside resort areas. It's going to become effective October 2022, right? Honolulu, Hawaii, right? We're talking short-term rentals, folks. We're talking vacation rentals, right? Obviously, if it's less than 90 days, it's no longer a short-term rental or a vacation rental, right? They're essentially outlawing it on Honolulu, right? In Honolulu. That's, that's friggin' Hawaii, folks. When I think about a vacation destination. That's Hawaii, right? You're thinking about going on vacation. Hawaii is the vacation place. So even the most sacred vacation place, restricted, right? Other popular areas, right? New York City facing housing crisis, targets owners of illegal Airbnbs, okay? New York City is pounding down, chopping down on short-term rental investors, right? Nearly one in five Airbnb listings in Los Angeles violated city law, advocacy group says, right? So it just goes on and on and on, okay? L.A., New York, Hawaii, right? These are vacation destinations, folks, and the cities are coming down hard, right? Now, that's J.R. Smith without a shirt, Okay. I had this up here to remind me of this, right? We do, like I said, we do short-term rentals in our neck of the woods. Our neck of the woods is actually Cleveland, Ohio. And when you think vacation rentals, you think Hawaii, you think New York, you think L.A. You don't think about Cleveland, Ohio. But even Cleveland, this area, right, uh, not immune to a lot of these restrictions, right? reason I got a picture of my boy J.R. Smith up there is he used to own this house right here. Now, this is not in the city of Cleveland, Ohio. It's in a suburb called Bay Village. It's a lakeside property, okay? And uh, this property, Big Mega Mansion, when J.R. Smith used to be on the Cavaliers, this was his house. 
No longer his house, okay? It's owned by uh, a foreign investment group or company, okay? And you know what they were doing? Well, they were running it as an Airbnb as well, okay? And what do you think happened? A big old monstrous party popped out, okay? Crazy party, like hundreds and hundreds of people. Cops had to be called. And this is like an area where all, like, you know, multimillionaires are living, right? So they're, like, not used to this kind of riffraff, right? So after that, this small little town, right, tiny little suburb, right, they enacted legislation in their city, right, in their little city, Bay Village, limiting, outlawing, banning, right, Airbnb rentals, right? So it's everywhere, right? It's across the board, okay? So what I want to talk to you guys about is what we can do as investors, right? And I gave myself this little cheat sheet so I can kind of stay on track, and these are essentially – the points I want to make to you guys, right? And the first point that I have on my list here is you guys have to understand the laws are in flux, right? The laws are catching up to the tech, okay? And what does that mean, right? Take the J.R. Smith story, right? It actually doesn't have anything to do with J.R. Smith. He wasn't there. He had nothing to do with that house. It just happened to be the house he used to live in, right? But you take that particular house. In that little suburb, Airbnb was cool, right? Wasn't illegal yet. Wasn't a problem. But then something happens, and the cities are like, nope, we're not feeling this, right? You have to understand, as you guys continue to buy more short-term rentals, you have to understand that the laws are going to be in flux here, right? Cities are acting and reacting to this new business model, right? This is a new business. How long has it been around, right? Like 10 years or less, right? And it's really just gotten popular recently right so like when these zoning laws and all this stuff was written right of course it's not illegal because it didn't exist when these laws were written but now cities are reacting okay and you're seeing them take advantage right but what you have to understand folks is you have to understand zoning okay basically every city every location you guys live live in invest in it's already got zoning regulations and what I think a lot of investors fail to realize, uh, we have to be more self-aware here. It's basically a hotel. That's what it is, right? As investors, we have to acknowledge that, okay? How many of you out there live in a little cul-de-sac, right? You got your suburban cul-de-sacs. You got your attached garages. You got bunch of husbands, bunch of wives, bunch of dogs, bunch of kids running around riding tricycles, bicycles, this or that, right? Nice little communities, little suburban communities, right? All of you are aware, or at least should be aware, that you can't just take these nice little cul-de-sacs and then somebody comes in and they take one of these suburban houses, they bulldoze them, and put up a freaking Motel 6. You all should be aware that that can't happen. We have zoning laws. That's what prevents that from happening. And I think, furthermore, you guys would all, if you're being honest with yourselves, admit you would hate that, right? You would be very upset. As a neighbor, uh, if they just took your neighbor's house, bulldozed it, and put a Motel 6 there, that would affect your property value, affect your uh, way of life, quality of life. That's, that's a big thing. So zoning laws are what prevent that, right? Residential zoning doesn't allow for a motel to just be slapped in the middle of a cul-de-sac, Okay. So what I think a lot of investors are failing to do, perhaps because we're blinded by the profits that we can make off of our short-term rentals, is that it's kind of the same thing, right? That's really what a short-term rental is. It's a hotel. It's a hotel that's got a house. You know, it's a hotel wrapped in a house is what it is. It's, it really is a hotel, though, folks. So with that in mind, you have to understand, Okay, it, it really is basically a hotel, right? So these laws that maybe don't outlaw it yet, these laws that need to catch up to the tech, these cities, these municipalities, council members, they're just trying to catch up to the fact that now we have hotels disguised as houses. They now need to make sure they change these laws and adjust, right? So the trend of places like Hawaii, Honolulu, L.A., New York, right? All these places, Bay Village, Ohio, where J.R. Smith used to live, right? 
all these little municipalities coming in and uh, increasing the regulation, changing the regulation, folks. This is something you have to acknowledge and accept, right? So you need to anticipate these variables, anticipate the change. Know that when we're investing in these areas, we have to acknowledge that, hey, this might be a good investment right now. I'm going to ride this out until I can no longer ride it out. Because it's possible that eventually they're going to switch these laws up on me. And then what do I do? That's why you got to have the appropriate exit plan, right? So it's, I'm not saying don't buy properties uh, to utilize the short-term investments. And that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm telling you guys is you need to plan for it. Plan for the unknown. Plan for what you don't know right now. And plan for the game to change, folks. You don't get to make the rules of the game. I don't get to make the rules of the game. But what I get to do, what you get to do, is we get to understand the rules of the game and play the game appropriately, making the most money. So when we're trying to do our short-term investing, we need to focus on, is the deal good right now? Great. What's the deal going to look like five years from now if the law has changed and I can't do a short-term rental? Can I rent it out long-term? Is this an area that's got good appreciation? Do I think I could sell it for a big profit, right? Who says that my short-term investment is a bad investment if I know, hey, man, I'll get to run this, make a bunch of cash flow for a couple years, and then when it comes time to sell, I'll make a big profit on the back end. What's wrong with that? Nothing, right? It's those investors thinking that, like, just because you got the investment right now today, it's going to be like that forever. That's not going to be the case, guys. It's like grass. you got to continually mow it, right? You can make your grass look amazing on Monday, but come next Monday, it looks like crap. you got to cut it again. Think of it that way. It's a living, breathing thing, right? So that is like one of the main things, right? Understand that these laws are in flux. Understand that these laws are changing. They're catching up with the tech, and you need to invest appropriately understand that when you're making your investments the game is going to be completely changed or could be completely changed don't get blindsided by that right i'm telling you here right now that hey let's continue to buy short-term rentals but only if we can still make money if the whole game changes right so understand those variables understand all of that another thing right i if you see it on there right I got Cleveland, Ohio, 3% tax. I wrote that on there to make sure I remembered this for you guys, right? And I'm not saying all you people out there that are like, oh, can't invest in Hawaii short-term rentals anymore. Let me send all my money to Cleveland. That's the new hot spot. That's where people are going to go surfing. I ain't saying that, but if you guys are interested in investing in short-term rentals in the Cleveland market. We do have other content out there on Holton Weiss TV about it, and you can book a free call with my team by clicking the link below. We have helped investors like you from all over the world invest in real estate. Honestly, more, though, than the short-term business is a lot of long-term stuff, right? But that's not exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm not really trying to get into a shameless pitch right now. The reason I wrote that on there is it's a placeholder of a lot of other cities, right? I just wanted to get this point to you. Cleveland is a city that has already legislated on Airbnb, on VRBO, on short-term rentals, right? I was talking at length about the laws have to catch up to the tech. The laws are in flux, right? You take the Cleveland market, where I'm at, where I'm from. That little suburb I told you about, Bay Village, remember? That's where J.R. Smith used to live, and then when he moved out of that house, investment firm ran it as an Airbnb, major party, people were pissed, now Airbnbs are banned in that city, okay? The laws changed. Those laws were in flux. When that investor spent several million dollars on that property, I think that was like a four and a half million dollar house, if I'm not mistaken. Um, wasn't illegal, but the laws are in flux, right? But just half hour, half hour east of that is the actual city of Cleveland, okay? In my opinion, you take the actual city of Cleveland, that's the type of city that would be a better target because unlike that suburb in Bay Village where there was no legislation in regards to short-term rental investing one way or the other, right? The laws had just simply not caught up with this new tech. There was nothing. 
no case study, no comps to go off of, right? So when you're investing, if you go into a city like that, you need to understand, okay, I'm definitely going to deal with variables. I need to anticipate those. I definitely need to anticipate change. I definitely need to have an exit plan to make sure this works because it could change like that, right? But you go to a place like Cleveland, they have already gone through legislation, and they've decided they're embracing it. They have added a tax, okay? They've added a tax on short-term rental income, 3%. So the city's going to get a 3% kick on that income, right? I get it. Government always trying to bend us over, take our money. Trust me, guys, I'm right there with you. But that's a good thing, right? Because that is the city that you know has already identified the Airbnb short-term rental business, and they have shot their shot. They've decided what they want to do. They chose not to ban it. Instead, they've chose to embrace it, and they're sharing in the revenue. That's good. You still need to anticipate variables and anticipate potential change because that could change, but it's less likely to change somewhere there where the city's already gone through the process and determined, okay, this is what our city wants our city wants it. Our city wants to collect the revenue off of it, right? So that is what makes that somewhat of a more stable short-term rental property investment. And I, again, Cleveland is just one city of many cities across the country that are doing this. So my advice to you is not necessarily, hey, drop your Hawaii rentals, buy some short-term rentals in Cleveland. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is when you're deciding what market to invest in, what municipality to invest in for your short-term rentals, look at the laws. Look at the building departments. Is there regulations, restrictions on short-term rentals? If you find locations where they have already regulated it and chose to tax it, in my opinion, that's a good place. That is a place where you are less likely to have the rules of the game changed on you, right? Of course, you need to do your due diligence and factor in the additional fees. But doing so, buying a short-term rental in an area where the city has already legislated it, you have a lot less unknowns, in my opinion, as opposed to doing it somewhere, say, like I mentioned, Bay Village, where there was nothing on the books. And, you know, somebody has a friggin' 4 or $5 million <laughs> mansion on the lake, and uh, now they can no longer do Airbnb out of it, right? That's what you need to understand. And then the last thing, the last thing I want to uh, <coughs> impress upon you guys is follow the billions, man. Follow the billions. What we need to understand is if you do get an investment, a short-term rental investment, things are running great, and then bam, the city hammers down, and now things are not so great, and you have to adjust your plan. It's not the end of the world, because if you've been paying attention to what I told you already in the video, you've already uh, accounted for that in your due diligence, number one. Number two, follow the billions. That might not be the end of the story, right? Now, I got a $75 million rental portfolio, and I like to think that's pretty sweet. I don't know a lot of people with $75 million rental property portfolios, but in the grand scheme of the world, I'm still just an itty-bitty little, little, little speck of dust. I don't really matter. I don't have the sway, the cachet to change laws, okay? But you know who does? Billionaires, right? And you know what's worth billions? Companies like Airbnb, right? So you don't think that they're out there lobbying right, on behalf of you, right, it's not because they love you or they're trying to do you any favors, it's they need Airbnb to be legal so they can collect their fees, you know, worldwide, right, but follow the billions, right, so just understand, when you buy something and then the city changes those laws, don't think it's the end of the world, you have billionaire companies with billions of dollars at stake, fighting those battles, trying to get legislation changed to allow it, right? Trying to get more cities to go uh, from having no, no laws on the books whatsoever uh, or cities that have banned it to cities, uh, like I mentioned, Cleveland, that are embracing it and taxing it, right? There's billionaires out there fighting the good fight for you, right? So in totality, my message to you all is you need to understand that things could very well change for the better or for the worse. So if you're going to invest in short-term rentals, you need to understand this is a new emerging model. 
you got to inspect a little bit of a rocky road. And as politics change, so too is going to change your investment. So when you're investing, make sure you underwrite that in. Make sure you put in the proper due diligence. And no, the rules of the game can change at any time. And to help reduce that, I'd focus on markets, cities, where they have already chosen to start taxing it. But even then, things can still change. But hey, we do have some billionaires out there uh, trying to fight that good fight. How many battles have we watched uh, companies like Uber uh, go through with New York, right? People like me, people like you, we can't spend $500 million on a lawsuit. But billion-dollar companies, companies that are... Uh, massive like that they absolutely can and that is how uh, change happens so folks when you're out there investing in these short-term rentals pay attention understand there's going to be some variables i hope this was educational for you guys uh, i want to know where you guys are seeing the best uh, laws and government compliance with your short-term rentals drop those in the comments let me know what markets you guys are having the most success in i also want to know the markets you are getting kicked in the nuts by your city so other investors can be a little cautious when they're doing their due diligence thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment